Hello fellow spare parts, I'm your host Chris Cappy. In this episode, we're talking about the Army's new whip called the Ground Mobility Vehicle. And I'm sure your first thought is the same as mine. No way in heck am I getting in that thing. So recently the entire US military has been adding unarmored, fast, lightweight, off-road vehicles like the GMV and the infantry squad vehicle. The Marines even have their own patrol vehicle that is so lightweight, there are reports of it flipping over when they tried firing a recoilless rifle from it. So what's going on here with all these bare bones infantry troop transports? I thought we just spent the entire last two decades upper armoring every vehicle to the teeth so that they could barely qualify going over a bridge. Let's hear some of their capabilities and its purpose on the battlefield before we fully judge this new strategy. In recent years, the proliferation of shoulder-fired anti-air missiles has made the idea of doing a massive airborne drop right over enemy territory impossible. You won't be able to get within 100 kilometers of an enemy airfield anymore without getting shot down, so MRAPs are obviously way too heavy to airdrop. You need the ground mobility vehicle to consolidate everyone near the drop zone and then move out quickly to the objective. These vehicles are actually a part of a major shift in US military doctrine that has been emphasizing speed instead of large, expensive tanks that can be downed easily by, say, a drone. Rest assured, though, the only way that this could become a huge cluster is if untrained officers use the vehicle incorrectly. Yes, I'm asking you to Put your faith in officers for once. They're not all bad. So the problem here lies in the fact that these might be too tempting. I could easily see complacent units rolling out of the wire with the GMV into a high threat area because they're low maintenance and easy to use. Leadership could potentially really screw this up for everyone if they use it for missions that are outside of its scope. Using it would be tempting. Picture this, you're sitting there before a mission, staring at your striker, which has been deadlined with a complicated fancy system that keeps automatically deflating your tires for the fifth time this month. Sure, you could borrow one of the strikers from headquarters, but those guys are always assholes whenever you go over there. Fuck it, let's just roll out with this off-road squad vehicle. We'll go on the mission, it'll be easy. Plus, we haven't had contact with the enemy in like forever, so, what could go wrong? Famous last words, sir. It's like my squad leader used to always say to me, Cappy, you're a very special tool. So hopefully this specialized tool is only used for its intended mission set. So I think the GMV was born partly out of the success of commercial off-road vehicles in Afghanistan. It started as a special forces cool guy thing, where you had A-teams riding around on ATVs with their Special Forces beards blowing in the wind as they traversed the Afghanistan mountainous terrain with ease. But the problem with the ATVs that they were already using is everyone has to individually be on their own vehicle. Basically, anytime you separate soldiers like this, you lose some command and control capability. The GMV and infantry squad vehicle solves this problem by carrying nine fully kitted soldiers. During the last massive airborne mission in the invasion in Iraq, there are a bunch of stories of troops having to run around and commandeer local civilian trucks, or worse, to drive to their objective. Having a squad-sized unarmored vehicle will fill the capability gap between having to ruck march everywhere and having to slowly drive around in an armored tank. One of the most interesting things I found when researching one of these unarmored infantry carriers called the infantry squad vehicle was how different the specifications are from its civilian vehicle counterpart. In this case, the Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. The military uses vehicles way differently than the civilian counterparts do. Military vehicles are driven kind of like a 18 year old with their first car. So the military modified the suspension and gave it a awesome 186 horsepower engine with a 2.8 liter Duramax turbo diesel engine. They tossed in some performance race components that would make the thing very not street legal. Just like my 2002 Toyota Camry after all the street modifications. I just love these unarmored vehicles, Cappy. Officers like me love to live life on the edge. You know that. Where we're going, we don't need armor. CIB or bus, baby. That's very aggressive of you, sir. I, I like the fighting spirit. Do you mind at all that it sounds like the army put all of the weight into the pimp my ride version of the souped up engine instead of maybe 
adding armored doors? <laughs> no, I don't really mind that at all. Did you know that a Motor Trend speed test says it can go from zero to 60 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds? You know how sweet that is? Of course, those acceleration numbers might change once you toss a whole squad in the back, and then you have to add all the Pop-Tarts, dip, and energy drinks necessary to sustain them. It barely needs any maintenance also, so I can sleep in with my hangover and skip motor pool Mondays. <sighs> Listen. Those complete psychos over at the DOD actually listened to me for once when I wrote them and asked them to upgrade my big wheels toy. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to hear you're one of the officers who will definitely not be abusing this vehicle. Full auto from the back seat, baby. The defense contractor GM will create 2,000 infantry squad vehicles, also known as the ISV. They landed a $200 million contract to create these unarmored troop transports for the army. The vehicle weighs in at about 5,000 pounds, which is way less than the 36,000 pound MRAPs. Listen, if my squad leader gave me a briefing saying, all right, everyone, gather around. We're moving out on the enemy compound in our new unarmored buggy. They'd have to drag me kicking and screaming. Look, everyone is wondering the exact same thing here, right? Where and when would these buggy vehicles be used? Because they look like a dang death trap. Fair enough, good question. Let's answer it with our new segment called Go or No Go. In this segment, I'll present both sides of the argument for why people love the vehicle and why people hate it. These off-road vehicles are a huge go. We need the ground mobility vehicle. It's fine that it's unarmored because it's only meant for airborne missions to be dropped out of a C-130 airplane or a Chinook helicopter. It's meant to move infantry quickly and safe to a patrol base once they're on the ground. This vehicle is necessary for the future of warfare, which will be unpredictable and require flexibility. It's likely our troops will be dropping up to 100 kilometers away from their objective in order to avoid these advanced anti-air systems. This AA will prevent our troops from dropping directly over the objective like they did in the past. The unarmored ground vehicle is good to go. We need a fast, lightweight troop transport because have you ever ruck marched over 20 miles? It sucks. This vehicle is a huge no-go. They couldn't even toss pretend doors on the thing so it would be rated for incoming tree branches, let alone bullets. They've got fabric that weighs all of, I don't know, two pounds that can stop incoming shrapnel and nine millimeter. But no, they couldn't even wrap this thing in a Kevlar blanket just so that I could sleep a little easier at night. The ISV is a giant no-go for me because leadership is gonna abuse this whip and take it out on joy rides and simply use it on every mission out of laziness. Send this vehicle back to the drawing board. I don't even want to see it again until it has a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on it and at least paper doors. This is the noest of goes for me. Which side of the argument did you agree with? Do you think it's a go or a no-go? GM Defense President David Albritton had this to say about the infantry squad vehicle, quote, we're leveraging General Motors engineering prowess and immense manufacturing capabilities to bring transformative solutions to the military vehicle market. Our initial success with the ISV shows our commitment to our customer and highlights our unique right to win in the military mobility market." End quote. That's all well and good, sir, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere within 600 meters of the enemy in this thing. There's a group of people out there that are saying that the infantry will never end up really using these off-road vehicles in any operational sense. What's the point of driving halfway to the objective then getting out before the battle? They claim this was designed by fat cat generals to simply line their pockets. It was made by people who will never use it, designed by people who have never made military equipment and then never field tested by a soldier. I can see where that narrative is convincing. It's easy to identify with that kind of story of leadership making millions of dollars to produce worthless equipment. But I don't think it's that simple. The truth requires more digging and even someone as smooth brained as me could figure out the army actually needs these vehicles for their new doctrine. I'd give the off-road buggies a go. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Thank you for watching. Please remember to take a second to like the video and subscribe. It helps us out a ton. Thank you to everyone in our Discord channel who helped give feedback on an early cut of this video.